Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another celebrity channeled video. This one is on the late singer actress Aaliyah. So many of you guys have written and requested that I do a channeling on her, so I thought I would. Actually, I thought I would do it yesterday and then I got sideswiped by another one. So I'm doing it today so that I can just bring forth the energy while it's here. Now, Aaliyah was a singer and soon to be even more so actress. She'd done some acting roles at the time of her death. She was on her way back from the Bahamas recording and she was flying into Miami when the plane went down just after takeoff. Now that much I remember, but I wasn't really a huge fan at the time. I was probably busy having my own kids and stuff like that, dealing with life, so I wasn't really paying attention. So focusing on her energy was really rather new for me. And I wanted to start off saying that as she came through, uh, I was meditating last night and asking her to come through. As the energy came through, I got a very distinct outline of her personality. Now, before we even get into that, I wanted to say Aaliyah was a January 16th, 79 Capricorn, okay, that which would make her, I think, 40 right now. She was um, a Virgo moon and an Aquarius rising. Okay, the Virgo moon is beyond super psychic. It is the most psychic moon sign. So when I look at this little girl and her energy, I feel as though she intuitively understood where the course of her life was going. Okay, having said that, I started to focus on her energy and I realized from very early on, five, six, or seven, it's a pattern that I see with a lot of these celebrities, but I am feeling like this was her life. So when you look at Aaliyah on camera and you listen to her say that she wanted to be a singer, be an actress, be out there in the limelight, I'm gonna step it back because what she was showing me is Yes, while she was in her physical body, that's what she wanted, but she's done so much more on the other side and that's how she makes me feel. It is what she wanted, but it's also interesting because she didn't remember not wanting it and the thought was placed in her head. So she's showing me that she was basically born into a servitude of sorts and to follow a career path that was chosen for her long before she was born. She was brought into this world to do this. It isn't a karmic thing, like she's such a good singer or actress that she has to do this. It was, she's next in line and this is what needs to happen. So in her family, this was expected of her. Now that's something that a lot of people don't understand because they're thinking she's a kid, her parents are whoever they are, and you know she's doing whatever she's doing. No, she specifically is showing me that when she was little, she knew her life was going that way, but she didn't know why her life was going that way. So it felt like it was her thought, but I'm gonna ask you to step back. She's kind of showing me this as I'm talking. So step back from what you think you want, whatever it is you think you want. You wanna be rich, you wanna be famous, you wanna have kids, you wanna get married, you want to become a hairdresser, you want to, whatever it is you wanna do. Step back from that and actually ask yourself, is this what you want or have you been conditioned to want this? She's very much like that. She's very sassy. It's her time right now. Like her soul is kind of interesting to me because it's very, very strong and she was very focused, but her focus was not of her own intention. She recognizes that now. She absolutely recognizes that. Granted, it's been almost 20 years since she passed away. I mean, it's been a huge long time on earth time but her soul took some time to recognize that. She is showing me, now I'm going through her family life and I'm seeing that she's being groomed to do this work very young on. And so I don't know if she showed an aptitude for it or she was actually born into it and expected and therefore groomed. I'm going that way with it, the way that it feels. It doesn't matter, I mean, our parents are here to guide us if you have parents to guide you in a certain direction, but is that direction what you want? She keeps saying it, is that direction what you want? She didn't recognize it until after she passed out of her body that this was not the direction that she was actually wanting to be born and do. So there's some confusion about that. She was being groomed to take over for other singers. She was a singer who was going to take over for some of the big names. And Whitney comes to mind, which is really interesting, and so does J-Lo. Those two names, crisscross with Aaliyah's name and energy as I'm picking up on her energy. Now, I am getting that when she was young, maybe 
9, 10, 11, 12. She was really focused on getting out there publicly. So Aaliyah is like, I'm going to be public. I'm going to be all that. Remember, when you have an Aquarius rising, you have Leo in opposition to your ascended. So it's very easy for you to respond like a Leo and then like an Aquarius. Leo, Aquarius, Leo, Aquarius. She was very odd in her presentation, unique, different, the Aquarius. And then she wanted the dramatics, the theatrics, Leo. So she went back and forth with that. The Virgo moon would have kept her at a distance from everybody, so you wouldn't have been able to unlock her emotions too much. Because remember, Virgo moon does not want to be criticized, it does not want to be judged. Her mother was primary in raising her, the father was there, but not there. So there is a disconnect between her and her father. That's the energy I'm picking up. Not that she didn't love him, that has nothing to do with anything. It's just that she didn't wasn't raised in the family with the same kind of interaction that she wanted on a soul level from the man that came in as her father this time. So go ahead to her being 11 and 12 and getting public recognition for her singing, her voice, her looks, her talent, everything about it, because she's doing that. And she remembers being so excited about it. Like, oh my God, look at me. I don't think she understood that she was here to actually do that work and that it was being laid out for her. She's showing me the carpet being laid out for her and this was her job. So from a childhood on, she was positioned to do this. She was positioned to maneuver and to do this. So when Aaliyah was born, it was known to her, to her family that this girl would be elevated. And again, I'm getting JLo over here and I'm getting Whitney over here. She was going to come in and be the cross between the two of them so they could align these women in certain positions in entertainment. And that's exactly what I'm getting. Now, I do feel that when now, Okay, so she's showing me herself and she was a, she's kind of describing to me, you know, I've been through a lot as a kid and I'm a big girl. Um, she's a small child as she's saying this and she's like quite connected to her physical body and she felt so cool and listen to this, when R. Kelly was placed in her path, I want you to hear that. She's saying this was, he was placed in her path. Aaliyah is talking about her first connection with R. Kelly. She is showing me that she was placed in his path. It was known to her family who R. Kelly was, and it was known to him who Aaliyah was. This was not an accident, and as much as he's in the news for being a creep and a pedophile, this was not really about that, although that is what would happen due to his age and her age, okay? So there's a huge age difference. Now, it's interesting because she was placed in his path at about the age of 12, all right? So she was pretty young. They say that they got married at 15, and by the way, they did, but I'm going to describe this marriage differently. First of all, on a sexual note, that happened between 12 and a half and 14 for them. Like right in that time frame, they were very physical together. What she's showing me with that is... I'm seeing them in a recording studio. So I'm actually seeing them in a recording studio. I'm seeing family members around them or people that were sent to watch her, you know, do that kind of thing around her. And I'm seeing the two of them sit down and it's kind of, it reminds me of, if any of you grew up with people that played um, bands and played in their garage and it was really dank and musty and people were smoking and people were drinking and like you'd sit on the floor and you, God knows what you get on your pants kind of thing. It feels like that, like I'm in some dirty kind of part of a recording studio off in the back with a dark wall. The two of them are sitting there. Now here's what's interesting. I get very vivid, very, very vivid pictures of her. Okay, so R. Kelly is starting to kiss her. Okay, she's young. She's probably seriously 12 and a half or 13. He's moving forward towards her to kiss her. She wants him to because she thinks she's grown up. Then she's showing me behind the scenes. This is supposed to happen. This is supposed to happen, okay? So she's showing me as much as she thought it was her intention to do this because she's a grown up. She's a big girl. She can do this. It was already set up energetically behind the scenes. And I'm not by any way abdicating what he did. That's not what I'm talking about. It seems like this was a very controlled environment. Now, I do see him kissing her. And what I'm seeing is I am seeing a packet of something in his mouth that's a liquid and he puts it into her mouth and then I'm seeing them connect together energetically. I actually feel like he gave her some sort of a drug 
love drug, 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 I don't know what it is, but it went from his mouth to her mouth in a little tiny, I can almost put my name on it. It's like I've seen it before, but I couldn't even tell you what it is. He's putting this into her mouth. I have very clearly that image. She is sitting there and suddenly she is with him. They are together. I'm um, not talking sexually, I'm talking energetically, as in their energy is bound together. This to me is reminding me of something you would do like a love potion, love magic, something sexual like that to bind them together. Now, the word marriage comes up and I do believe there was, quote, a legal marriage between the two, but behind the scenes, the reason for it, the agenda that was not overtly out front was because there was a business connection between the two. So there's a really strong business connection between the two of these people and Aaliyah and R. Kelly are following forward on their path to be together. I am seeing that in his mouth. When he's making out with her, he's putting, it's a, um, it looks like an iodine packet, but not. It's a, a plastic container. It's got liquid in it. It's very tiny. He had it in his mouth. He put it into her mouth. Once that's done, their energy sealed together. This is why she was with him. Now, this to me is sexual magic, uh, uh, energetic tie, something going on behind the scenes. But it was meant to happen, and the family knew it was going to happen. They just had to get Aaliyah along with it. She didn't really have the control that she appeared to have over her life. Her energy, she keeps showing me J-Lo over here. It's like, keep seeing J-Lo. Okay, so her energy was focused towards what J-Lo is now, was Aaliyah then. Now, I'm not talking about talent. I'm talking about presentation of the personality. I'm talking that way. She keeps pointing out J-Lo, J-Lo, J-Lo over there. So I feel like the two were coming up in tandem or I guess J-Lo's older. I'm not quite sure how that works, but she's pointing it out to me. The other thing that I'm seeing with her right now is and I'm going into just the background that we know of her from her persona publicly. But she is showing me the instance with R. Kelly. And she's saying, don't be so quick to believe everything is exactly the way it's presented. Now, I believe he's a pedophile and a, a prick and everything else. But she's showing me behind the scenes things that are going on. And she's saying he's captive like she was captive. So she's recognizing in him what she saw in herself. So there's a, there's a uh, focus between the two of them that neither one of them was in control of their own life the way that a soul should be. So they were in servitude. That's what I'm getting. She is saying that part of what L R. Kelly's problem is, is he has no memory of some of the things he's being accused of because of the way that he was operated. She's kind of showing me like this, like he was operated like a mechanical doll. She's moving like a mechanical doll. So there's something in that. Either it's um, he was hypnotized, he was drugged, He and I'm not saying it's not part of who he is. I think they have to work with people that have this kind of inclination. She flashes me right back to her family. Her family was the same kind of family. They expected this of her. Her career path was not pushed for her because she was talented or extraordinary. She is both. I'm saying that. She is both because I can feel the energy like, what? What? Um, she is both, but the family pushed her because it was their duty within the construct of where they were placed within the entertainment industry. And I'm seeing that. So she was given a ride to be who she was based on who her family was. And, and, and she was placed forward that way. That's how it was. She is showing me before her death. And it's fascinating because she's showing me other people in the music industry that we know now that are very big people that have married very big singers. And this one particular guy, and I refer to him in a lot of videos, but in this particular video, I'm just gonna straight out say it, Jay-Z. And it feels like Jay-Z had a focus on Aaliyah in a position a little bit like she could be my wife. And he may have just thought she was hot and whatever, but it feels more nefarious than that. And it feels like it was orchestrated. And it feels like at the time of her death, she's going to bring me to the pilot and she's going to bring me to the whole death scene so I can kind of understand what's going on. I have not looked into it, so I'm going to go freeform here with it. But what she's showing me with Jay-Z is he had her eye on, he had his eye on her and she wanted to do stuff over here and he wanted to consume or control. That's what this is about. He wanted to consume or control her. So there's a feeling of 
she wants to be independent and free form. He wants her to come with him. She's not listening either way and therefore she needs to be taught a lesson. So now cut to the day that she's, and I'm getting the three days before she stepped foot on that plane in the Bahamas. The man who they call the pilot, the pilot of her plane, where there was so much, he wasn't licensed at the time, all of that. I remember that part of it. That's actually not entirely true. I mean, he either was or wasn't, quote, legally licensed, but just because you don't have your driver's license for a month or two does not mean you don't know how to drive. I want to, I want, she, she wants that to be known. This pilot was put in a position to take the fall for something else that went on. There were some mechanical errors on the ground. There was something with reading, um, uh, she's literally showing me this, um, um, a thing you put into the tire and you read the tire pressure. There was something with the tire pressure of the plane and there was something with one of the instruments. One of the instruments was literally tampered with at the time or, or neglected tampered with or neglected. She kind of feels like it was tampered with. And there was a lot of confusion before she got on the plane. I see her grabbing her stuff. She's turned around telling someone to pick her stuff up. She has an awfully hot coat on her. <laughs> she's wearing a coat when she gets on this plane and I'm thinking it's the Bahamas and she's going to Miami, but she like grabbed the coat and she's like, I'm gonna grab this, I don't know why. Anyway, she grabbed the coat and maybe they were gonna go to New York or somewhere after, after or whatever, but she grabbed her coat and she kind of stomps on the plane. Like she's just aggravated at this point. So she's saying she's not paying attention to what's going on around her. There's people over here. So if the plane is here, I'm kind of seeing the plane down a long walkway and I feel like it's at the end. So I feel like they're going on some kind of other surface. So it's not like cement. There's something else they're walking on that's flat on the ground on the way up to the plane. She grabs a coat, she gets on the plane and she's turned around like she's frustrated. She's like, you know, I'm, she's not paying attention. I feel like she wished she paid attention to what was going on there. The pilot for sure was put in the position to take the fall and it wasn't necessarily his fault to do that. Like it wasn't his, this wasn't about him. He was put in that position. And by the way, he wasn't actually medicated the way that they describe on the plane. That's not true. That's a trick. She says that's a trap. That's a trick. He wasn't. He may not have had his license up to date. I mean, I drove around for five months last year in my car without my license up to date. Does it mean I don't know how to drive and I'm going to cause an accident? No, because I'm not high and I'm not doing anything. I just couldn't bear to go to the DMV until I had to go and wait in that line for hours. But th that's what I'm saying. So when you hear that, it seems like, oh, he didn't have his license. Like it was me flying a plane. Not that at all. This man was equipped and knew how to fly a plane. But there was discrepancy. I'm seeing a very heavy man um, in the background, not the pilot, another like very heavy man talking and saying things and we need to do this. And there's like a deal going on over here, which Aaliyah is not part of. Okay, so she's pushing it over there and she's like, that's that. And I'm walking over there and she gets on the plane. When she is on the plane, she's sitting there and I can see her get up again, go to the doorway of the plane and say, hey, we have to go. Like she was, one thing is professional. So she was trying to get where she was going and there were things that she had to do. And I'm seeing her go over list in her head. The plane is taking off and I swear to you, there's something with the tire pressure and she had such a bad feeling about it. That's what I'm saying to you. I can feel it in her. Like she had angst, but her anger overtook her angst. Like it was about interfering with her work and she didn't want that at the time. And she was like pissed off and she felt like you should be paying attention to this and they weren't paying attention to it. So the plane takes off and suddenly there's like a dip. It's a dip and then boom, down, okay? So there was a first dip and then the plane just went down. Basically it crashed pretty much, I mean it, it pretty much killed everybody. I think one person went to the hospital she may have been alive a little bit, but immediately, like what she's showing me is she crossed right out of her body. There is a nice woman that kind of grabbed her on the other side. There was something like a fight for her soul when she left out of her body. And I, I don't think you can take a soul. I don't think you can 
fight it on the other side, but that's how she's making me feel. And this nice older lady, I want to call her a grandmother figure, but I don't know that it's actually her grandmother. I do get a strong connection. She has a uh, feminine goddess energy around her quite a bit and her energy aligns with the female. She doesn't have much use for men, which is interesting. I think she may have grown up. She may have gotten married. She may have had kids, but in the end, I feel she would have had a woman tribe around her, not necessarily stayed in a marriage because her alignment is to these female energies that are around her. And I feel like she was grabbed by this older female on the other side who's a grandmother figure to her and she was pulled into love is how I want to say it. So she was pulled. I feel like she didn't see the plane go down. So there was no pain for her the way that we think of pain, uh, like how terrible that must be to be in an accident and what does that feel like. She was immediately pulled out, but then her her body, the way that I see it, which I realize she's a soul, but her body is like pushed into this woman's chest and she's she's hidden, okay? So like you would hug a child, she's hidden like this so she can't see. It took her a long time, a long time on the other side, like four years, which isn't really a long time, but it took her a while on the other side to understand what happened and to understand that she was in basic slavery from the other side through her birth into the body and then back out. So it wasn't what she wanted to do. She's saying she's working very hard on bringing her energy forward and actually trying to move through these levels, okay? So she's talking about these different levels as if she's being integrated into a different way of thinking on a soul level. So she's being aligned differently. She had no memory. Now what she is telling me, which is interesting because I'm asking like, if you're on the other side and you're choosing to come through in a body, I'm just asking her this because she's over there and I'm not, and I can't remember. And I'm asking, which was her problem, she couldn't remember. I don't think any of us can really remember. We remember bits and pieces. But I'm asking her why she couldn't pick the life she wanted or why isn't the soul free to do what it wants in her case. And what she's saying to me is when you see children that come into this life and they live these kind of lives that are more along the ritualistic side of life or um, they are harmed. She's saying, remember, this is what she's saying. Remember, a soul is thousands and millions of years old, if you want to look at it that way. A child is a new human body. So the child is coming in to a flesh body, a new flesh body, but the soul has been going on for years. So what we see as a child in this life, our child, our young people, our young entertainers, whoever they are, is actually a soul that has been able to move through many lifetimes. She is saying that when a child gets tricked on this side, because she, I think she's referencing the video where Whitney kind of thought her guide was guiding her and it was not a positive guide, but a negative guide. She's saying that that soul being born into that family has already given up their freedom on some level. She is showing me that. She is definitely showing me that. And she's saying, pay attention. This is what she's saying. You don't believe me, me, meaning me. I think she means me. You don't believe me? Pay attention to the way that she dressed and pay attention to her face and the way that she moved. That's what she's saying. She's saying, actually pay attention because she was connected to this side of things. Her family was. Now, being born into that family, she doesn't have any recognition of what is actually going on because usually for some reason when we get here our memory is gone some of us have memories i can remember some past lives not fully but i can see a connection to people and i can tell when i recognize them and i i can recognize certain souls and i can recognize certain experiences that i knew i was going to have them because i've seen them before and issues that i've had in past lives and countries I've lived in, but I can't put it all together to make it make sense. So I just sound like a lunatic. And I think that's what she's saying, but she is showing me, um, and it kind of, she's kind of sad about not being able to get married. There was a wanting to get married. There was a wanting to not take things for granted. That's what she wishes. Like she hadn't taken them for granted. She was thrown into this work thing. That's how she's making me feel like I'm thrown into the work environment. I shouldn't have taken these things for granted. I should have just gone and got married. 
whoever she was with at the time that she died, she was actually really in love with this person. Like she felt she was in love with this person. And I feel like she was thinking about like, I'm going to have kids. I'm going to do that kind of thing. And we're going to create together. There was a whole um, heart connection and creative connection between her and whoever the last person, not R. Kelly. Now, going back to R. Kelly, he's kind of usurping in this video, but going back to R. Kelly, she's saying, pay attention to what he says and look at his reactions. He's not just a wicked bastard, okay, who does stuff. Um, she's saying that he too is a slave to this environment and she's showing me that he's been pitted against other people. This happens when you're born into these families. That's what she's saying to me. This happens when you're born into these families. So I am to assume from what she's saying, she was born into one and he was born into one and they tried to marry them. Now I know they denied being married, but they were actually married and he was sexual with her, but it was younger than what he said because he said he married, well, he didn't. He said she was 18, she was 15. They were getting married, but the marriage itself was a collaboration of energy and a collaboration of goods and services and items. It wasn't a marriage of, I'm, you know, what was he, probably like 27. I'm 27 and I'm marrying a 15 year old and I wanna, you know, have children with her. And even though it's wrong, I love her. It wasn't that, it was, it was to combine to make this empire is what she's showing me and it was such nonsense. She's actually freed herself up on the other side. Aaliyah has freed herself up energetically from patterning in lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. That's what she's talking about. Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime that you are unaware of when you come into the human body and you don't understand what's happening to you. That is what's happening to R. Kelly right now. Yes, he did abuse women pedophile, pervert, sexual person. He should go to jail. He should be whatever, locked up and beaten in a jail cell. However, she is reminding you that each person that comes in into these circumstances on a soul level doesn't quite understand what's happening to them. And she goes back to the thing that was in his mouth, the drug, the tincture, the magic potion. Not that it works, not that it doesn't, but she's showing me that and she's showing them as they kiss and they go right into each other's energy field and they combine like that. So this was something that he gave to her that cemented her to him energetically. That's what was going on. That's what the marriage was representative of, not just the sexual, like I'm gonna, you know, have sex with an underage child kind of bullshit. There's something else going on behind it, okay? The connection of the energy on a soul level and making the two of them harness their energy together. It's a powerful thing. She's saying we don't really know everything about certain things and they appear one way and they're spoken about in a certain way, but she's actually asking you to look at her face. Look at the way she dressed, look at the way she walked around, look at how she presented herself, and then look at the connection. She does miss her family though. She did love her family. She actually really loved her family, but don't think for one second that that family didn't indoctrinate her into what she experienced, even with R. Kelly, even pushing her in that direction because they did. Starts off real young. So that's what she's saying. Um, I do feel she is showing me that there is a young girl who's about 10 years old, very similar in color and looks and to the eyes and the stance and the focus and the poise. This little girl is going to be presented like another Aaliyah. She says they're getting ready, they're on their game again to bring this girl up and to put her out there publicly and bring back that energy from that time. So she wants you to be on the lookout for this little girl. You should start hearing about her next year. She is talking about all of the things that are going on. There's very much a motherly grandmother connection with this girl, like she is an old soul and she's enjoying her interaction on the other side with these older women that are around her. It's like she's being taught to think again for herself on a soul level and to free herself. She's basically saying that to me. So her time on the other side has been about freeing herself from the servitude that she felt coming through in the human experience. Really fascinating. I haven't heard that one yet, but that's Aaliyah from the other side, what I get right now. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, you Aaliyah fans out there. And once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.